Today, the government takes on the issue of facial recognition technology and your privacy. Tech companies are among the groups coming to Washington to help create the first voluntary guidelines. 60 Minutes correspondent Leslie Stahl began looking into the impact last year. Facial recognition is already in some of our home appliances, like TVs. Hi, TV. In our mobile devices, pins and passwords are giving way to face prints. And the technology can single us out in real time as we go about our daily business, often without us ever knowing. What's unique about face recognition is the fact that you can do it surreptitiously from a distance and continually. It can happen, we don't even know. That's the point. Tim Stevens is an editor at large with our partners at CNET. Good morning, Tim. Good morning. This is fascinating, and Leslie Stahl started this debate kind of on 60 Minutes, but the future is that everyone will have a camera on them. Everyone will have a camera on them. And this technology already exists for facial recognition technology. What will it be used for? Right, there's certainly plenty of applications and plenty of desire for lots of different industries to know who you are and where you're going and basically to track your information. And the easy way to do that is to look at your face. You can really accurately determine who somebody is just by looking at their face. You can measure the distance between their pupils, the size of their nose, the size of their mouth. And even if you grow a beard, you shave your beard, put on sunglasses, these systems can still tell who you are. What's the scariest thing about this technology? Basically, there are databases being created right now of, of your face matching that to your profile. So for example, a lot of people don't know that Facebook is actually tracking what you look like and they are using that to tag pictures of you that are uploaded. Whether or not you know that, whether or not you approve of that, it's happening because it's automatically opting you in. You have to explicitly go in and tell Facebook not to do this. Part of what the government is going to look into is to try to create some rules and some regulations to say that if you do create a database like this, that you have to actually explicitly be a part of it instead of being included by default. But you can imagine Target or Walmart or some other retailer going to Facebook, paying them some money to license this database, putting cameras in the entrance of their stores, and then being able to track you when you walk in and know exactly who you are and even what areas of the store that you're hanging around they, in. They want to create voluntary rules. Voluntary rules right now. Right now there are no rules at all. Facebook could sell that data if they want to, and Facebook's actually been pretty cagey about what they want to do about this data. Right now the government wants to at least put some sort of voluntary rules in place to, to really make recommendations of what you should do with this data, and hopefully there'll be something a little bit more mandatory coming. And hopefully there'll be something a little bit more mandatory coming. Mm. I'm trying to figure out what, the, what, it's, what, what is the benefit to it. What, what is the information used for? I still don't get it. I mean, there are some benefits for us right now. For example, if you have the new Xbox One console. The new Xbox One console. When you walk into your living room, it'll recognize you and sign you in. It'll make recommendations of what mm -hmm. games you should play, that kind of thing. That, although, stays on the Xbox. is local. There's no privacy concerns there. But for Facebook, the idea is that it's automatically tagging you. The question is, is that enough of a benefit for you to give up the privacy? I think a lot of people would say no. no. Tim Stevens, we'll continue to follow this. Thank you so much. Thank you.